Wednesday morning. It is two days before Christmas, December the 23rd, and I hope you're looking forward to celebrating the birth of our Savior, uh, the Lord Jesus. And along with that comes comes this great family time, great church body time. I look forward to seeing all of you who can be here tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. It'll be a brief Christmas Eve service, and it's just a great way to set the tone uh, for Christmas Day. And um, I uh, kind of heavy-hearted this morning, honestly. I uh, had a text from Constantine this morning and asked me if I could call him before 7. And so, of course, you know, Constantine uh, is battling cancer, just sudden uh, within the last week. And yesterday, they, uh, the oncologist sent him directly to Athens Regional Hospital so they could begin emergency radiation to try to shrink the tumor uh, to get it smaller um, because they, they cannot do the surgery at the size of the tumor right now. And so Constantine had, uh, had some things on his heart and he and I spoke this morning. And uh, I want you to continue to pray for Constantine and the family. Um, boy, just lift them up. Um, He's a dear man, and we just love him to death, and his family, his whole family, uh, Leah and the kids, and so be praying for them. Um, the body has been great to respond to some needs that they had, uh, because as you can imagine, this has uh, put a, a real burden on them financially, and so the body's been so good to meet the needs that they had, and, uh, and just loving on them. But as I was thinking about uh, Constantine and um, boy, I just I just had to stop and pause and and think about all of God's many blessings in my life, and I'm sure you can say the same. That God has been good uh, to you through whatever it is that you've faced um, in distress and times. God has always been good, and He always will be good, and He always remains faithful. Well, this is our last day in the Psalms, uh, Psalm 119. We're concluding with the last stanza of this psalm, and as you're aware, we're going to take a break until just after the first of the year. Um, we'll, we'll begin in the Proverbs daily, and so I want to encourage you that uh, in the meantime, uh, stay in the Word. Uh, maybe you want to get ahead on the reading, but those of you who have been joining since March in the Daily in the Psalms, we have now read through and meditated, reflected on, praised God through every psalm in the Scripture, and so it's been good. And so I'm looking forward to next year, starting in Proverbs, and uh, from there, we'll continue these. I want to encourage you to share this with other people. Uh, I'd love to build our, our, our community in the morning in our daily devotion uh, to keep people connected and hopefully give them an encouraging word in the morning. And, and the main thing, though, is that we're in the Word together. And while we're not present physically, I really feel a sense of presence with all of you every morning uh, when, when you type something in on the comments, and uh, it does me good, and, and I know it's mutual in that. But as I was thinking about all of God's blessings in our lives this morning, there's an old hymn that came to my mind, and I don't know if you sang it growing up in the church that you may have grown up in, um, but it's, it's, a, it's a good one. I, I just love the, um, love the words to it. Count your blessings. When upon life's billows you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Blessing, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as.
as the days go by Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your blessings, see what God has done Count your blessings, name them one by one Count your many blessings, see what God has done When you look at others with their hands of gold Think that Christ has promised you his wreath untold Count your many blessings money cannot buy Your reward in heaven or your home your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, Courage, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. That's a very appropriate song for the end of, of this year, 2020, um, what we can reflect back. It seems like it's been a very long year, uh, but it's also been a very short year in some ways. And well, God is good. God's faithful. And I, I just, I hope you sing that melody all through the day. Count your many blessings. Name them one by one. And not only sing the song, but stop and pause and count your many blessings. Name them one by one. We could go all day uh, citing God's blessings in our lives. But to conclude Psalm 119, uh, beginning in verse 169, we know the psalmist is in some type of distress. There are others that are coming against him, opposing him, uh, trying to bring harm in his life, um, criticizing him because he walks in piety, he walks according to God's righteousness. But the theme of the psalm has been throughout that the one thing that stands forever, the one thing that that um, is very assured, the one thing that the psalmist desires most is to honor God uh, to understand God's Word, to know God's Word, to meditate on God's Word, and to honor God by walking with Him according to His Word. And God help us that that would be our, our desire, to walk in fellowship with God through His Word and being empowered by the Holy Spirit to not only know it and understand it, but to apply it in our lives not by fleshly attempts and legalism to try to live according to God's word, but by the power of the Holy Spirit walking in his word. He begins this last stanza by crying out to God, God, let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. God, help me understand in accordance to your word. The psalmist recognizes that his ways are above our ways, that 
that, that God is high and lifted up. Oh, the depths and the riches of the knowledge of God, Paul says. Who can understand them? And so he cries out, God, let me understand. Verse 170, let my plea come before you. Deliver me according to your word. But God, in the midst of that, verse 171, my lips will pour forth praise. For you teach me your statutes. My tongue will sing of your word. For all your commandments are right. Here the psalmist is saying, I will express to you in worship because you are worthy of worship. God, my, my lips will praise you. <clears throat> God, my son, my tongue will sing your word. For God, all of your commandments are right. They are right. Even in times where it seems as though our human reasoning would, would try to think better. No, God's word is always right. His commandments are always right. His statutes are always right. His precepts in his word are always right. Why are they right? Because they come from him. They come from his nature and character and who he is. And he is a holy God. Verse 173, let your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. Notice there's a will there that we have he had. He has chosen God's precepts. He has chosen not to walk according to the wisdom of this world or the seeming wisdom of this world. He's chosen not to walk in accordance with his own fleshly reasoning, but he has chosen to walk in accordance with God's word, with God's precepts. Oh God, I long for your salvation. Oh the Lord, O oh Lord, and your law is my delight. God, I long for your salvation. We can long for his salvation as well. The realization of his salvation is the way I like to put that. We know that we are saved when we've trusted Christ. We have that assurance that we are saved. But there's a, a sense in that where we are being saved. There's that continual process that we are being saved, and we will be saved. We will realize the result of our salvation when the end of our days come. Many of you have had close family members, uh, friends, pass through this last year that you know knew the Lord. Um, and while especially in this Christmas season. It's a sorrowful time. I still miss my mom and dad. Five and seven years ago, they passed. But I still think of them a lot during this season of the year, and I miss them. But the hope is that we have, the assurance that we have is that they have realized their salvation. They realized the moment they passed from this earth to that next life, that eternal life, they were in the presence of the Lord Jesus. And we will too someday be in his presence. And we will realize the fullness of our salvation. It's a day to look forward to, really. Um, not that I want it today or tomorrow. But it is a day to look forward to when we realize our salvation. Let my soul live and praise you. And let your rules help me. Verse 176 is kind of an odd way to close the psalm. But he does. He says, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant, for I do not forget your commandments. And all of us recognize that, that daily we go astray like a lost sheep. We're sheep. We're dumb sheep. <laughs> uh, raised sheep when I was growing up. And I recognize that sheep would just wander off. Um, sheep just kind of meander around. And, and they will wander off from the safety and the comfort of the shepherd. And we, if we're not careful, we can just wander off. That's why it's important to be in fellowship with the body during this season the best way that we can, either through one of the media platforms or if you're in presence in the service, um, to, be, to be present, to be connected with the body. Uh, don't think that you're not a sheep because you're a sheep and you can wander off uh, just like any sheep can and so maybe if if you're one that's that's kind of wandered off and maybe you're just kind of by accident or bumping into this devotion this morning 
go back to the shepherd. Turn around and go back to the sheep pen. Depend on his Holy Spirit to keep you in that, in that fold. Uh, maybe there's some steps you need to take to get reconnected uh, to the shepherd and the, and the body, the rest of the sheep. I encourage you to do that. Uh, but we recognize that we're sheep. And oh God, um, bear the presence of your Holy Spirit on our hearts and our lives to keep us in close fellowship with you. I love you. I pray that you have a blessed Christmas time with whatever uh, way that you're doing that with family or uh, whatever. Um, I, I typically close and, and, and pray and ask the Lord to bless you. And this morning I thought I would sing that song, The Lord Bless Thee and Keep Thee. my prayer and that's my blessing to you straight from the word of God. I uh, do pray the Lord bless you. Ask God today, God, give me an opportunity uh, to express to somebody else your goodness and your grace. God, let me plant a seed uh, of your word in somebody's heart, a seed of truth, God. Uh, Lord, let me come across somebody that's already had a seed planted and and maybe they need to have that cultivated. God, if I, if, if you'd be so gracious to let me share in the harvest of that. Um, pray for me this afternoon. I have an appointment with a young couple that uh, express their desire, of repentance, and baptism. And so this morning, evidently, a seed's been planted. The soil's been cultivated. They're ready to, uh, to come to know Christ. And so uh, pray for me at that time with that couple today that uh, we'd be able to see... Uh, two more sheep come into the fold. I pray, uh, God, I'm going to miss you during the season. But anyway, we'll pick up together daily in the Word beginning in January. I love you. Bye-bye.